Hello and welcome to a new course. This semester, we're going to be looking at exceptional learners. My name is Evan Ortlieb and I will be one of your instructors of record. So you're either enrolled currently in 312 or 514. They're both on the same topic. And we're going to be examining how all educators can be prepared to address the diverse needs of exceptional learners. This includes those with identified or unidentified disabilities, as well as those recognized with areas of giftedness. We will discuss a range of services that can be provided because no one size fits all approach actually exists, particularly within special education. And instead, our instruction has to be tailored to meet the specific needs of students at the individual level. We're also going to investigate what does it mean to provide a least restrictive environment as required by the law, and also that how uh, individual children, uh, how can we support them and give them the resources needed to make progress each and every day, each and every month and every year throughout their uh, academic uh, progression through K-12 schooling. And we're also going to be examining the frameworks such as universal design for learning that can serve as a backbone to designing suitable teaching and learning experiences. So if you take a look here, this is a little bit around the progression that we're going to uh, embark on this semester. So we are going to have weekly modules. Um, and so we're going to have a total of 14 modules within this course. Uh, those are going to be grouped again uh, weekly according to the length of this semester. Within each of those, you'll see a variety of uh, readings, videos, PowerPoints, and other sorts of resources to really guide that learning. There are also going to be a number of different responses required, whether it be discussion boards, video flip grids, or other kinds of graphics. Again, we're trying to model this semester, giving students choice in the ways in which you respond uh, according to the principle of multiple representations, which is a cornerstone of universal design for learning. There are going to be weekly assignments and sometimes quizzes. And there's also a final portfolio that we're going to discuss a little bit further today as well. So we think about first setting up your learning environment within any classroom or any school is necessary as a cornerstone to get people engaged and motivated and driven to learning. There has to be a connection with the content in some form or fashion. Um, UDL or Universal Design for Learning is an attempt to fix the curriculum rather than trying to fix the student uh, according to the label, according to this sort of medical model that's overly used within the vernacular and the language that is uh, uh, you know, too often occurring within schools. It's not that Johnny has a problem. It's not that we have to fix something. <clears throat> Instead, we have to design our instruction that really enables us to reach each and every learner for their individual worth and uniqueness and the, the background and cultural experiences that they bring to the table. More than ever, coming back from COVID-19, students have been out virtually for quite some time. There's considerable learning loss that has occurred in many of these situations. And I think it's next to impossible to just try to pick up out of nowhere, grab our pacing guide, and teach to the whole group and think that we're actually going to reach all learners. Instead, our focus has to be on designing lessons of varying needs and reaching people wherever they are, planning in advance for potential barriers that might arise along the way. And so again, this is some of the things that we're going to consider in trying to be inclusive teachers. When we talk about equitable learning opportunities, this is sometimes a hot topic. I don't know why, but it is, right? And there's a lot of political uh, attention that, that this sort of thing receives. <clears throat> but equitable learning opportunities are not the same as equal instruction for all. If you give everybody a worksheet, some people will do fine with that. Some people need more support. Some people need extension or acceleration because they're gonna finish early. And therefore that's not an equitable learning opportunity, okay? And so the basic premise of universal design for learning is threefold. We need to be able to provide multiple means of engagement, multiple means of representation, and multiple means of action and expression. So in the first module, we're going to be looking at a video from Katie Novak, 
which is one of your authors from a textbook discussing how universal design for learning, what it looks like, and then also how can we uh, incorporate this within our lesson planning. We're going to be thinking about how do we reach all kids, not just the ones with disabilities, not just the ones with, with who are you know labeled with a particular giftedness, but all learners in their individual uniqueness. So we, we too often times leave kids behind because we don't accelerate or have high expectations for everyone. And that's something that we're going to consider this semester as well. So, and then later this, this term, we're going to get into some GT instruction. And my question there is, what does equitable, gifted, and talented instruction look like too? So those are some considerations for us to ponder. There are two core principles that we're going to be looking at this week for universal design for learning. Um, again, universal design for learning supports the design and implementation of a flexible response of curriculum. It provides opportunities for the participation and achievement of all students and also the flexibility in the ways in which information is presented. So for instance, this week in your course right here that we're doing, uh, we're going to have a number of multimodal content that varies in the ways in which the information is disseminated, whether it be audio-based, visual, textual, or, or even intersections of all of those three. And so we're trying to model this effective practice uh, with you each and every week. And we hope that you'll join us in the same way in um, uh, varying the ways in which you respond to some of these prompts throughout the semester. At the heart of UDL is mastery-based learning, also known as competency-based learning. And it's taking roots, root in many states across the nation. It's about how do we support learners towards mastery, for which there are many potential pathways. For instance, if you punch on your phone, how do you get to uh, Taco Boy, you know, in downtown Charleston? There's going to be a variety of directions or pathways that you can end up at the same outcome. Some are going to be quicker routes, other ones might be safer routes. And so UDL is all about planning instruction for multiple pathways for students to reach mastery. Again, UDL reduces unnecessary barriers in instruction and assessment, which we know is right because not all assessments are done in an equitable fashion, especially if you have um, a, a non-native English speaker who's being assessed in English on his or her scientific knowledge in sixth grade. Maybe they can't uh, express themselves uh, scientifically speaking in English, but that doesn't mean that they do or do not know that content. We've had 30 years in special education of using the wait to fail model, right? And instead, the UDL model turns that upside down uh, and, and enables us to plan for potential hurdles and really clears the way for success for all. An easy way to remember UDL is that it occurs during the planning phases for instruction for all and then differentiation occurs later on. As we know that not all students are the same, especially in heterogeneous and diverse schools within all of our communities. The other two points on the screen talk about providing appropriate accommodations and modifications, which we're going to get into this semester as well. And finally, maintaining high achievement expectations for all, which I've mentioned, but too often times we, forgot, we forget to do within our curricular planning and instruction. Finally, we're going to get into a number of different topics this semester. Have a look at the syllabus to review these. These are going to be the guiding weeks. Um, again, this week we're touching on universal design for learning. We're also gonna be looking at special education law, multi-tiered systems of support, also known as RTI within some school districts, collaborative practices, uh, uh, really partnering with other specialists and coaches and administrators alike tackling IEPs, discussing accommodations and modifications, various observation tools for exceptional learners, and even gifted and talented instructional supports. We're also going to discuss how to support English learners, how to close the achievement gap, hopefully once and for all, using equitable teaching and learning experiences, personalized versus differentiated instruction, providing multimodal scaffolding techniques, including acceleration, for those high achieving students. And finally, you're going to create that portfolio that I mentioned that houses a number of articles and other ideas in an area of your choice uh, from a topic covered within this course. 
and that's going to serve as your final exam equivalent. I hope that this has been a helpful introduction to this new class, and we truly look forward to working with you uh, as we navigate topics associated with exceptional learners. Take care.